Hello, bookworms, and welcome to a place where books come to life. So, get cosy. It's the Cosy Bookworm. Afraid But Brave by Sarah and Rue Jones Illustrated by Anna Filler Deep, deep, deep in the woods, well, not too deep, a little deep, but not extremely deep in the woods, under a great big pine tree, lived Simeon. Simeon was a Sasquatch. What's more, he was a fearful Sasquatch. Really, all Sasquatches are that way. That's why very few people have ever seen one. Though they are very large, they are excellent at running away and even better at hiding. When Simeon was small, ish, there was a great big thunderstorm. Sasquatches are especially afraid of thunderstorms. With the first rumble of thunder and flash of lightning, Simeon, his mother and his father each took off running in a different direction. Simeon hadn't seen them since. So afraid of everyone and everything, Simeon was all alone. Except for this one pine cone he'd found. That one pine cone wasn't so bad. It was small and brown and had an unassuming look about it. Simeon had named it Walter. And they were best friends. Each morning, Simeon ventured down to the waterfall to shower. Sasquatches are particularly afraid of water and fish, so his showers were not long. Next, he would head home for a breakfast of Saskatoon berries and honey. With his belly full, he would sit outside his front door and whittle beautiful songbirds. When he tired of that, he would go for a jog. Then it was time for afternoon contemplation. Nobody would ever spot him doing these things, however because woodland critters were always making sudden noises, causing him and Walter to scramble for cover. When the coast was finally clear, he and Walter would enjoy their famous bark soup while watching the sun go down. Then he would stretch, yawn and say, <coughs> Well, it's about that time meaning bedtime. Simeon had a good life by any Sasquatch standard, but sometimes he was, maybe, just a little bit, lonely. One Monday, as Simeon sat whittling a mountain bluebird and Walter sat admiring, there was a strange noise in the distance. Simeon froze. It sounded like thunder, but softer. And yet, it was growing louder and louder and louder. Springing to his feet, Simeon grabbed Walter and dove under his pine tree. He peered out from beneath the branches. To Simeon's astonishment, three smallish creatures jumped out of the thundering thing. <laughs> they looked like Sasquatches. Tiny, bald Sasquatches with just a little fur on top. The tiniest one, no more than 20 walters tall, was sort of bouncy and squeaky. <laughs> Terrifying! 
Simeon pulled back under the branches. He sat perfectly still, desperately hoping that creatures would go away. Simeon turned to his whittling. Surely they will leave before I can finish this bird, he thought and felt a little better. He was deep in concentration, working on the tiny beak, when a high-pitched giggling sound erupted nearby. <laughs> he turned. There, in his very own house, only 35 walters away, roughly speaking, was the itty, bitty, bald Sasquatch. And it had Walter. <laughs> Simeon yelped in terror. Shoo! Shoo, tiny Sasquatch! He squeaked. I'm not a Sasquatch. I'm Meg. I'm an adventurer. Do... do you bite? Simeon asked. I bite apples, but only green ones. She replied. Well, are you poisonous? Do you sting? Constrict? Simeon's eyes narrowed. Do you carry rabies? Um... She shrugged. I don't think so. I'm just Meg. I skip rope and scooter and eat ice cream. So do you... And dance ballet and go to kindergarten and find worms. What's a kinder... And watch movies, play with friends, draw birdies. You like birds? Simeon asked quickly. Yes, birdies are my bestest animal. I draw them every day. On Mondays, in winter, tomorrow, Thursdays. Simeon reached over and picked up one of his carvings from a shelf. Timidly, he held it out to Meg. Boreal chickadee! She exclaimed. She pointed one by one to the other carvings. <gasps> Waxwing, sandpiper, goldfinch, kinglet, warblerb, warbler, warblerber, and thrush. That's right. You are a very smart Meg. What's that? Meg picked up a slender, inquisitive looking bird. Ooh. That one is a rare little bird. I've only seen one in my whole life. It's called a Sprague's Pippet. Just then, a voice came from outside. Oh, Mommy! Meg quickly kissed the Pippet and handed it to Simeon. You can keep it if you want, Simeon offered. Thank you, friend! Meg giggled, rushing outside. <laughs> friend? Simeon tilted his head. Me? The early birds had just begun to sing in the trees and the sun was peeking shyly over the horizon as Simeon woke the next morning. Suddenly, he heard a familiar, high-pitched squeak. Or was it a scream? It was! Meg! Simeon hurried outside, where he followed the sound of her cries. He found her wrapped tightly around a tree branch at the edge of the river. The branch was about to snap. Simeon's feet ground into the riverbank. Looking at the deep, fast-moving water, his heart was pounding. He could not move. He was too afraid. Meg screamed again. Meg needed him. Simeon leaped into the rushing river. Water swirled around and over him. 
he let out a muffled cry as the fish swam right past his nose. But then he stood. To his surprise, Simeon found that he was strong enough to wade against the fast current toward Meg. Finally, reaching the tiny, shivering Sasquatch, Simeon gathered her into his arms. Are you okay, Meg? I'm an adventurer, but I got stuck, she said softly. You must never go to the river alone, Meg. You must be careful. You must be safe. You are precious and rare. Like a Sprague's pipette? She asked. Even more rare and much more precious, he said, as he carried the small girl back to her sleeping family. Get into your warm bed, little Pippet, and be safe. Ah, okay. But brave too, like you. She yawned and crawled inside. As he walked slowly back to his tree, Simeon scratched his head thoughtfully. I can be brave for a friend like you. Later that morning, Meg came back to see Simeon and Walter. The three of them spent the whole day together, whittling, contemplating, foraging and jogging. Meg even sampled Simeon's famous bark soup. It was the best day Simeon had ever had. Early the next morning, just as Simeon was about to leave for his waterfall shower, he heard the soft thunder sound again. He turned to look out his door. Gah! He yelped, his face nearly slamming into Meg. <laughs> Hi, friend. Time to go home for kindergarten. Daddy says we can come back soon. Meg wrapped her arms around Simeon's neck and gave his nose a great big kiss. Then she was gone. Simeon smiled through watery eyes. <laughs> Bye, Pippet. Thank you for making me brave. <laughs> As the days went by, Simeon and Walter carried on their routine. Berry breakfasts, afternoon jogs, and whittling. Nothing had changed, not one single thing. Life was pretty much the same as before. Well, maybe a few small differences. And every day, Simeon listened for the soft sound of thunder in the distance. Finally, Many, many days later, not too many days, but really quite a few days later, as he sat carving a small pipit, Simeon heard it. Instead of jumping in fright, Simeon sat still. Instead of hiding, Simeon watched. The rumbling grew louder and louder and louder. And Simeon, the brave Sasquatch, smiled. If you love the cozy bookworm, click like and the bell below. Click subscribe for even more stories. Oh, cheeky worm. <laughs> <laughs>